Hey, kia ora. Helen Brahms here coming to you live from Sun City in Arizona. Hope you're all having a super fantastic sparkling start to Winning Wednesday. Yes, it is that day of the week where we celebrate our wins for the week as well as our little win. And you know, they could be big wins, they could be small. Doesn't matter. We celebrate them anyway. And why? Because it all helps to be part of a winning mindset. And today we have nine, <laughs> had to count the fingers, make sure they were all there, um, nine ways to help you develop that winning mindset. So let's get a move in because we got a busy day today. We all have incredible days ahead of us. They're also going to be super fantastic and sparkling too. Okay, challenge yourself. Number one, challenge yourself. What do I mean by that? Look at where you were this time. Look at where you are today. And look at where you were last week. Did you improve your results? Are you keeping track of your results? So when you challenge yourself, it's sort of like, okay, this week I've been able to make X number of calls or I've sent out X number of cards or I've made this many sales. So now your challenge is to take what you've done this past week and you challenge yourself to do better coming the following week. Let's improve on those results. So challenge yourself to reach higher than you thought you could if you did five if you did five if you closed five sales this past week why not go for eight or nine or ten this coming week challenge yourself to better yourself over the previous week with your results number two if you don't already have one find a mentor mentors are massive in businesses they are great as accountability partners they are great for helping guide you along the line especially if it's a mentor that has been where you that has already forged the path that you want to go. So if, for example, if you are in, um, I don't know, car sales, for example, and you want to do better than you did last week, and there's um, somebody who is in the dealership who is always the top seller, why not offer to take them out for lunch and ask them if, if you know, ask them if you could ask them some questions about how they got to where they are about what it is that they do to be the top salesperson each week. Um, ask if, you, if they could mentor you. You know, there's no harm in asking. If you don't ask, you don't get. Um, number three, learn from your breakdowns. We don't call them failures, we call them breakdowns because um, breakdowns are areas where we have, um, where things didn't work. So now we have to learn the lesson. Why didn't it work? We ask that question, why didn't this work? What could we have done better? What can we learn from this? And then we move forward. So we ask ourselves, why did it happen? How can we stop it from happening in the future? And what can we learn from this? And how, oh, and how, how do we fix it? That comes in there as well. <laughs> so learn from the breakdowns. Use the breakdowns as lessons to help you improve yourself, improve your business, and move forward. Um, number four, keep a winning folder. Now, what is this? A winning folder is... Um, it's a place, it could be on your computer, it could be wherever you want it to be, but you just put in there um, like little journal snippets about things that you had a win for. If there was a newspaper article, if there was an article written about you with your photograph, swipe it and put it into that folder so that at times when you're feeling down and you're feeling like it's not worth it, you go back, you have a look at this winning folder and it inspires you to keep going and keep moving forward because you've seen, hey, this is the path, of, this is how far I've already come, I've already had these wins, I can keep it going. It helps pick you up and helps keep you moving forward. Um, number five, surround yourself with influences um, that that you um, that inspire you. You want influences that inspire you, and you don't even have to know them. Did you know that on Facebook, if you're on your main page on Facebook, over on that left, -hand, if you go down there, somewhere under one of those more buttons, is a thing called friends list. You can actually put people on there that you want to follow. And then you go to your friends list and you click on that list and it will only show what those people have posted. It won't show anything else. It'll just show what those people have posted. And this is how I can quickly go through Facebook every day. It takes me 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening just to go through Facebook catch up because I've got groups that I go into. I also have um, people that I follow on Facebook that are in my list. So I have my list of top 100 influencers. And these could be people I don't even know. It could be I'm following their business page on the page about them um, and it's just the fact that I follow them because they um, post inspiring stuff that inspires me stuff that I can um, they post things that I can learn from so it just makes it very easy to um, 
to do that. But even when you're out and about, once we start getting back to in live meetings and stuff, where are these people hanging out? These people of influence that you want to be associated with, you want to be in their presence to draw on their energy and things. Where are they hanging out? Go hang out with them. Um, if they are within your circle of influence, if they're in your own circle of contacts and friends and stuff, again, like with the mentor, take them out to lunch or dinner or something. Number six, t number six, number six, take a break. This is huge. This is so huge. It is so huge. In fact, they did a study on this. And um, you've heard me talk about this before, about the Forbes article that came out in 2013. And I'm sure there's an updated one. I'm going to have to go find it. But in 2013, they ran the numbers on 2012 on stress-related health care. It was in 2012, in 2012, and that's almost 10 years ago. So I can only imagine what the cost is now. But in 2012, it was a $13 billion industry. $13 billion was spent on health stress-related health care. And here is the key sentence from that article. Most of this cost could have been avoided if people had done something as simple as take a vacation. There was even, um, in that same time period, there was also um, an article from CEOs to other CEOs about the importance of taking vacations, the importance of encouraging their workers to take, their employees to take vacations. The benefits of encouraging your employees and even yourself to take vacations is massive. There are studies about this. Um, there are studies that will show that if, for those that do not have their employees take vacation, there is higher sick leave, there is higher stress related to the jobs, there is lower production, lower production, a impact on the bottom, a negative impact on the bottom line. But if you encourage your employees to take vacations, there is an increase in morale, an increase in productivity, an increase in creativity, and a positive effect on your bottom line. So if you encourage your employees or encourage yourself to take vacations, to take a break, to get away from the office environment. That is why every Sunday I unplug, except for my Facebook Live, my two Facebook Lives today, I basically unplug. I try not to get, I try to get on the computer, I try not to pick up my phone. I basically, well, I've, I'm getting really, really good at it. There are some days I slip up, and some because only because the genealogy calls to me a lot. And I'm just a sucker for genealogy. Um, <laughs> it's just one of those inbred, those one of those deep things that I just have to do, but I'm getting better at making sure I do my genealogy, get my genealogy fixed on Saturdays so that on Sundays I can take the day off completely and go do things. Um, number seven, having a morning routine. This is huge. If you have a morning routine set up to help you for a winning day, it could be things like, you know, as soon as you wake up, you, um, for me, when I wake up in the morning, um, I've got overhead cabinets above my bed and on those overhead cabinets is these little four by four stick ups, and I don't have any within distance. Um, they're little, sorry, three by three stick ups, and stick ups are post it size. They are post it size canvas prints that you can get 16 to a sheet. These things are incredible. Um, and I'm um, trying to, oh, I've got a tube with them over there. I'll have to get that sheet out next time I'll show you. But what I've done is I have put in 16 different I am statements, things that mean something to me. And every night before I go to bed and every morning before I get up, every night when I go to bed and every morning before I get up, in fact, it's never really funny because Zephy comes and snuggles up next to me in bed at night and I turn around and says, okay, shall we do our I am statements? And she just goes, <sighs> and so I lay there and I'm actually pointing them out, actively pointing them out as I say them. And I have... And I mix up the patterns on how I go around the 16 because I have a speaker that's in the middle of them all, so they're kind of around the speaker. But at the bottom in the center, I have the last one, which I always say last, and that is I am super fantastic and sparkling. The other 15 all get their same time, but the one that always, always, always goes last is I am super fantastic and sparkling. But I lay there and I read out my I am statements every morning before I get up, every night when I go to bed. Um, so have your morning routines. I have my morning routine where I do my I am statements. I then get up. Um, most mornings I am awake before my alarm clock goes off, which is always good. The alarm clock's just there as a backup in case I oversleep. And I purposely turn my alarm clock off on Saturday nights, and I have a big pink sticker that sits on top of my computer out here when the computer's closed that says, alarm clock off. And <laughs> I can show you, it says, alarm clock off. 
and I stick, put that on top of the laptop um, so that I know when I see that in the morning on um, Sunday mornings, I then go back and turn my alarm clock on. Um, that way it's ready for, Sunday, for Monday morning because I don't want to oversleep because I don't want to mess up my routine. Um, you know, we have breakfast, we go for our walks, um, you know, shower, dress, all that sort of stuff. Everything's in there, meditation, whatever you want to put in there, have a morning routine and stick to it. Um, even on your off days, I still sit, even though I don't get up at the same time on, on a Sunday, you know, usually I'm awake by five, before five o'clock. On Sundays, I sleep until 6.30. For most people, that's not sleep. For me, it is. <laughs> but I still have the same routine when I get up. Um, number eight, instincts are your friend. You know when you get your gut instinct that you need to follow a path or you stay away from something, you meet somebody and it's sort of like, yes, I need to know this person. And other times it's sort of like, I need to get away from this person as fast. Trust your instincts. They are your friends. Your instincts, your inner soul will tell you if something is right or not. Learn to trust them. Um, and number nine, the last one is always, always be moving forward. No matter what you do, always have movement. Even if it's taking a break during the day and getting up and dancing, just putting some music on and just dancing. Um, going out for walks. We, you know, Zephy and I do two nice long walks every morning and every night. Um, the evening ones are usually longer than the morning ones because the morning ones were a little tighter on the time schedule and stuff. But the evening ones, we usually get a nice long walk in. Occasionally, we'll go out in the middle of the day, depending on what the temperatures are like. Um, and if Zephy wants to go out in the middle of the day, I'll take her out in the middle of the day. Um, but I'll try and keep her off the asphalt because that's a little too hot for her to walk on. Um, so fortunately, we've got like a whole bunch of empty sites here so we can actually move around quite freely and get to the grass areas quite easily. Um, but yes, yeah, so you want to you want to be moving, constantly moving. If you are um, on your mindset, you need to be constantly moving forward. Physically, you need to be moving, getting up at least once an hour for five to ten minutes or walking around. Um, I have paced miles up and down the length of this RV. I have played with Zephy. Um, you know, just anything to completely get that break from work, but I'm still moving. I'm moving, moving, moving. With Zephy, it's always fun because you always end up laughing. And that's a good movement to have too because if you do those deep, good belly laughs, that is, um, those good deep belly laughs is aerobic exercise for your internal organs. And it helps improve your outlook. It helps improve your attitude. Um, it's very hard to be sad when you're laughing. <laughs> you know, um, it helps it release, release the endorphins like that. So even sitting down and having a good belly laugh is movement as well, as long as you've got some form of movement. People on Zoom calls, when they get on the Zoom calls, I'm always just dancing away or something. And I'll have headphones on. People go, what music are you listening to? I go, just whatever's playing in my head at the time. Um, <laughs> this one like, what? I said, People will say a phrase and it sets off a song in my head. I said, and there was one day I, um, I had um, Whitney Houston's I Want to Dance and somebody sent me a message in the chat that said, I love her acapella, her, um, acapella version of that song. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's my favorite version of the song. And then they sent me, and then they even went one step further and sent me a link on YouTube so I could go watch it. And I was like, yes. So that's kind of my little favorites there on YouTube now is every now and again, I'll go watch that one. But it's, you know, somebody will say a phrase or I'll see something that will ins that will spark a song that I that I know or have heard of or something, and even though I can't think of the words, it will bug me for the rest of the day till I go look up the lyrics and play the song. Um, sometimes that's how I get songs out of my head, is going and looking up the lyrics, playing the song, and then it's, that song's done. It's now out of my head uh, until somebody triggers it again later on. But anyway, those are the nine things for a winning for a winning mindset. Challenge yourself, find a mentor, learn from a breakdown. Have a winning folder with all your wins in it. Surround yourself with influences. Take a break. Have your morning routines. Instincts are your friends. And number nine, move forward always. Have a super fantastic Sparkling Wednesday, and we will catch you guys later. And let us know in the comments below what wins you are celebrating this week. Hey, konara.